Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to prove that this limit equals 1 using integrals, derivatives and the area of a circle. And this might sound weird at first, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do this new proof. I came up with this proof and I think it's amazing. So let's go ahead and try to find that this limit equals 1. But first of all, where does this limit appear to us? In the first place well you can find this limit when you try to differentiate the function sine of x and also the function cosine of x and you cannot apply L'Hopital's rule even though it is a zero over zero case because you don't know what the derivative of sine of x is unless you know the value of this limit so let's try to differentiate sine of x from first principles and let's try to find what happened. So the derivative of sine of x equals to the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all divided by h. So we can rewrite sine of x plus h as the following so let's first write the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x times sine of h minus sine of x all divided by h now we can rearrange the following limit in this way this is just the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x times cosine of h minus one all divided by h plus the limit as h goes to zero of cosine of x times sine of h over h. Now, as you can see, x does not depend on the value of h. So, cosine of x is just a constant respect to h, and also sine of x does not depend on h. So, this is simply sine of x times the limit as h goes to zero of cosine of h minus 1 over h plus cosine of x times the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h. Okay, now I'm going to assume that we know what the value of this limit is. In fact, this limit goes to zero and I made a video about that. If you don't know how to solve it, then you can check that video. But now we if this is zero, sine of x times zero is obviously zero, and we get cosine of x times this limit. We know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, but now we have to assume that we don't know what this limit is. And this is the limit we are trying to prove. And for several reasons, you can show that this limit has to exist and it has to be not equal to zero. So for now, let's just call this all this stuff here a uh, just a constant. So this equals to r times the cosine of x. We still don't know what r is, but we're gonna find it later on. Now we're gonna use this to prove our limit. And how can we do this? Well, consider a circle with radius 1, this circle right here, with radius 1. Well, it is described by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. And how can we find the area of this circle using integrals? Well, it's not something too difficult. Uh, we just have to isolate y and we get two function. But we're just going to consider the one with the plus side. And this equation right here is the function of the semicircle. And 
2 times the area of the semicircle circle gives us the area of the circle. In other words, the area of the circle equals to 2 times the integral from minus 1 to 1, because the radius here is 1, of the function, the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now, we know that the area of a circle of radius 1 is pi, because the area of a circle is pi times r squared, where r is the radius squared. And if r equals 1, this simply equals to pi. And we're going to find that r is equal to 1 because the area of a unitary circle has to be equal to pi. Okay, it might seem confusing, but do not worry. This is something very trivial and is something very interesting. So how can we solve this integral? Well, there is a square root, 1 minus x squared, so the best thing to do is to do a trig substitution. So let's go ahead and do this trig substitution. If we let x be equal to the sine of x, then we know that 1, oh sorry, sine of, let's say, theta, simply because we cannot use the same variable, otherwise it doesn't make sense, uh, and now we have 1 minus x squared, this is 1 minus sine squared of theta, and this comes from a very famous identity, that's cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. So this has to be cosine squared of theta. And now this is under the square root, so we can simply simplify the square root with cosine squared of theta, and we get cosine of theta. But now we have to find what dx is, and to find what dx is, we have to differentiate both sides of the equation. So dx equals to the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is just cosine of x, but we do not know that it's cosine of x, we know that it's r times cosine of x we still don't know what r is equal to. So this is r cosine of theta, sorry, I forgot the theta, d theta. So let's do this substitution. And we can even do another thing. Since uh, the function, the square root of 1 minus x squared is an even function, it has a symmetry with respect to the y-axis, we can rewrite this integral as 4 times the area of a quarter of the entire circle. So the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And this is a further simplification and it's always nice to simplify things. Okay, so uh, now let's do our substitution. So we have that the area of the circle equals to the 4 times the integral from, well, as you can see, x equals sine of theta, when x equals 0, theta equals 0, and when x equals 1, the arc sine of 1 is pi over 2, of the square root of 1 minus x squared, that is the square root of cosine square of theta, so this is simply cosine of theta times the x, but the x equals r times cosine theta d theta, so let's just replace it with r times cosine theta d theta. So now r is just a constant, so this is the 4 times r times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared of theta d theta. And how can we solve this integral? Well, we have to use another trig identity. And we're going to use this identity, that cosine squared of theta equals one half times cosine of two times theta plus one. So now let's do this substitution. And this equals to 4 times r times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half is just a constant, so just 
move it outside the integral sign and we get the following integral of cosine of 2 theta plus 1 d theta and now this is something trivial we can solve it in a matter of seconds so I simplify 4 and 2 we get 2r times now the entire derivative of cosine of 2 theta is just 1 over 2 times times 1 over r times sine of 2 theta because remember that we still don't know what r is and from this formula we know that the entire derivative of cosine of 2 times theta equals 1 over 2 times 1 over r times sine of 2 theta and then we have the antiderivative of 1 is just theta so plus theta and we have to go from 0 to pi over 2 because we're integrating from 0 to pi over 2 okay guys so let's just try to find this integral just put pi over 2 in this formula and we get 2 times r times 1 over 2 times 1 over r times sine of 2 times pi over 2 is the sine of pi because we can simplify 2 and 2 plus pi over 2 then minus 1 over 2 times 1 over r times sine of 2 times 0 is just 0 plus theta of 0 is just 0 now we know that sine of pi is just equal to 0 so this term is just 0 we know that sine of 0 also equals 0 so 0 obviously equals 0 and we get pi over 2 so this equals to 2 times r times pi over 2 and as you can see we get r times pi but remember that r is not the radius of the circumference it's just the value of the limit as x goes to 0 sine of x over x but we chose a circumference with radius equal to 1 and we know the area has to be equal to pi because we can prove the formula of the area of a circle that is the area of a circle is pi times r squared in a lot of different ways and if r equals 1 then the area of a circle must be equal to pi so we now have that r times pi has to be equal to pi and this means that r has to be equal to 1 and this is how we can prove this limit and it's an astonishing fact for me because there are a lot of ways in mathematics to prove things and in another video I'm going to show you Another way to prove that the area of a circle equals pi times r squared without sine and cosine so we don't have to worry about uh, this limit and in particular I mean the derivative of sine and cosine. If you enjoyed this video leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and until next time bye!